so I'll be starting with the very basics of electrolysis so what is electrolysis electrolysis is the decomposition of a compound into its elements by an electric current so electrolysis occurs in an electrolysis cell I'll first show the main features of an electrolysis shell so there is a beaker there are two electrodes connected with a battery right? and there is a liquid the liquid is called an electrolyte this is either an aqueous solution of ions or a molten ionic compound these are the cathodes the cathode the, uh, these are the uh, sorry electrodes the electrode connected to the negative terminal is called the cathode that is the negative electrode the electrode connected to the positive terminal is called the anode that is the positive electrode this is the positive terminal this is the negative terminal electrons the batteries uh, function is to pull electrons from the anode and push them towards the cathode so this is the direction for the electron flow right so we can see that there is a loss of electrons at the anode and a gain of electrons at the cathode this shows that oxidation occurs at the anode and reduction occurs at the cathode for this you can use the it's basically anodic oxidation cathodic reduction so you should know this right now at the cathode metal atoms are usually metal atoms are formed because metal ions gain electrons metal ions are positive ions they gain electrons to form metal atoms right in that case either the metal is deposited on the electrode or it forms a molten layer right in case if it's a non-metal positive ion for example hydrogen then hydrogen will form hydrogen ions will form hydrogen gas and the gas will show will leave the elect the electrolyte as bubbles whereas at the anode it's negative ions that move towards the anode and they get oxidized now electrolysis is a redox reaction at the cathode let's say for example if we have uh, zinc chloride then at the cathode over here in zinc chloride we have two ions this is Zn2 plus the positive ion and two chloride ions that are negative ions so the zinc ions will move towards the cathode and they will get reduced that means a gain of electrons So this will be the reaction, this will be the equation for the cathode. Whereas at the anode, chloride ions will lose electrons, will get oxidized to form chlorine. You can see that the electrons are balanced. So if we add the two equations to get the overall equation, you will get electrons will get cut and you'll get Zn plus Cl2 right so this is the cathodic equation this is the anodic equation and this is the overall equation for the electrolysis these were the basics of electrolysis Next, we'll go through some electrolytic calculations over here there are three basic formulas that we'll be using the first formula is from physics that is Q equals IT where Q is charge, I is current, and T is time. The second formula is moles of electron, N represents moles, is equals to charge, that is Q, upon F. Okay, so this is moles, now what is F? 
f is the faraday's constant faraday's constant is basically the quantity of electric charge carried by one mole of electron right this this is obviously this is charge so it's measured in coulombs and its value is value is 96500 coulombs sorry see right so over here how how does this formula arise so if we have the charge of electrons right charge of electrons yeah the given amount of electrons and the charge of one mole of electrons so this ratio will give us the moles of the electrons basically it's through the ratio it's through uh, the ratio that one mole of electrons have 96500 coulombs which i can represent as f because it is a faraday's constant so n mole of electrons will have charge q so if we just cross multiply q into 1 q is equals to f into n electrons so from here you can get this formula right the third formula is f equals le right over here again f is faraday's constant l is avogadro's constant and e is the charge of an electron now we know that faraday's constant is the charge of one mole of electrons right so avogadro's constant is the number of particles in one mole of a substance so if there are one mole of electrons then this will give the number of electrons in that one mole so the number of electrons multiplied with the charge of each electron will give us the total charge of one mole so that is how we get this formula what is avogadro's constant again it's basically the number of particles in one mole of a substance its value is 6.22 times 10 power 23 sorry 6.02 times 10 power 23 question is calculate the mass of copper metal produced when 5 ampere of current flows for 10 minutes during the electrolysis of aqueous copper sulfate right so they are asking for the mass of copper metal so copper metal will obviously be produced at the cathode so we'll write the cathodic cathodic equation there is copper metal copper ion sorry from the electrolyte that is copper sulfate plus 2 electrons produces copper metal right now i'll find the charge that pass through the electrolyte so we have formula q equals i into t i is current that is 5 t is time in seconds in the si unit so to convert 10 minutes to second i'll multiply it with 60 so this will give 3000 coulomb now the formula for number of electrons was charge upon faraday's constant right q upon f so q is 
upon f is 96500 so this gives us 0 0.031 moles of electron right? and we have to find the mass of copper metal so first now over here we know that the ratio of electrons to copper metal was 2 is to 1 from the equation so if we have 0 0.031 moles of electrons we'll have x moles of copper so to find x we'll multi we'll divide 0 0.031 upon 2 which gives x as 0 0.0155 moles sorry this is the moles of copper metal now we have the moles of copper so 0 0.0155 equals to mass upon the ar that is 63.5 so mass is equals to 0 0.984 grams i hope the question is clear in this question they are saying during electrolysis of sodium sulfate following data has been received the current provided was 10 amperes volume of hydrogen collected was 60 centimeter cube find the time taken for this experiment so this is kind of a reverse question where the time is not given but the volume of hydrogen collected is given you have to find the time so over here what's basically happening is that hydrogen is obviously collected at the cathode because hydrogen ion is a positive ion so it will travel towards the cathode where it will be reduced to hydrogen right so what will be happening at the cathode is basically that we'll have two hydrogen ions plus two electrons converting to hydrogen gas right so what we can do is that if because we have the volume of hydrogen we can first find the number of moles of hydrogen so moles of hydrogen is equals to volume in centimeter cube upon 24000 this is equals to 2.5 times 10 power negative 3 moles right now we know that the ratio of electrons to hydrogen was 2 is to 1 moles of hydrogen are 2.5 times 10 power negative 3 so we can find the moles of electrons so moles of electrons will be 2.5 times 10 power negative 3 times 2 that is 5 times 10 power negative 3 now we had the formula moles of electron is equals to q upon f we have the moles of electron we need to find q and f is 96500 so we can get q that is equals to 482.5 coulomb now using the formula q equals it Q is 482.5 I was given in the question as 10 amperes 10 times T so time is equals to 48.25 seconds I hope the questions are clear now next is an experiment to calculate the value for Avogadro's constant that is basically represented by L. For this, electrolysis of copper to uh, copper sulfate using copper electrodes is used. This is the setup. So in this first, the electrodes have to be washed with water and then they're attached. Let's say in this experiment, uh, a current, the current provided was 0 0.2 amperes and the time was 34 minutes right 
this was the current provided and it was allowed to continue for 34 minutes after that time the electrodes were removed they were first washed with distilled water so this is important first with distilled water and then with rinse with propanone solution as propanone absorbs moisture then the masses of the change in mass of the cathode is taken as copper is deposited at the cathode so let's say the initial mass of cathode in this experiment was 55.5 grams and the final mass of cathode was 55.63 grams so the increase in mass which is actually the mass of copper deposited is equals to 0.13 gram right so now again what's happening at the cathode at the cathode reduction is taking place so copper 2 plus ions plus two electrons produces copper this is what's happening I can find the moles of copper moles of copper that were deposited on the cathode that is 0 0.13 upon the AR that is 63.5 so this gives the moles as 2.05 times 10 power negative 3 moles right now the ratio of electrons to copper from the equation is 2 is to 1 so if copper is 2.05 times 10 power negative 3 moles then we can find the moles of electrons so moles of electron is equals to there will be twice of this so that will be 5.4.1 sorry 4.1 times 10 power negative 3 moles this is the moles of electrons now what else I have is the time and the current using these I can find the charge the charge that, flo uh, that was flowed so that is Q, Q equals I T I is 0 0.2 times 34 that is the time in minutes so I will multiply by 60 this gives the charge as 408 coulomb right now we know that the moles of electron is equals to charge upon Faraday's constant. So let's find the experimental value of Faraday's constant. So if we divide 408 by 4.1 times 10 power negative 3, the answer comes as 99512.2 coulombs this is the experimental value obviously there is an error in, ex in our experiment so that's why the value is a bit different now we have faraday's constant we know that f equals l e where f is faraday's constant we need to find l which is avogadro's constant and e is the charge of an electron that is 1.6 times 10 power negative 19 so through this method you can find the experimental value of Avogadro's constant that is coming as this is not the exact value because obviously it's an experiment and there are errors but this is how you do an experiment to calculate the value of Avogadro's constant.